The following video is sponsored by InstantMaddenCoins.com. The only place to get Madden Coins instantly on every console and platform is InstantMaddenCoins.com. Use code CLICKWID at checkout for a 10% discount. Hey, what is going on, guys? Clickwood here, back again with another NFL playoff prediction video. Guys, we're down to the final three football games of the season. It is absolutely crazy that it's come down to this. I am very, very excited for this weekend's football games, and I hope that you guys are as well. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys my predictions in the AFC Championship game as well as the NFC Championship game. And uh, yeah, we're going to go into some of the things that I've predicted correctly as well as incorrectly throughout these playoffs. And then hopefully we're going to be able to come to that conclusion as to who will be representing the AFC and the NFC in Super Bowl 51. So... With that said, let's start talking about the AFC first. We're going to be talking about, of course, the Pittsburgh Steelers heading on the road to play the New England Patriots. Now, the Steelers are coming off of a win on the road in Sunday Night Football against the Kansas City Chiefs. They did beat them. That was a nice game by the Steelers, particularly their defense, locking down the Chiefs throughout the majority of the game. They pretty much made Travis Kelsey, who has arguably been the best tight end in the league, a non-factor in that game. Now, obviously, Kelsey had some issues himself, but I think that the Steelers' defense overall, their tight end coverage was excellent in that game. They also did a great job of taking away Tyreek Hill's ability to return punts, and that was a major factor coming into this game because a lot of people talked about Tyreek Hill being potentially the best most explosive player in the NFL right now, and the Steelers were able to take that away by doing some smart things on defense when he's on the field, but also in the special teams game, the high-angled punts, the punts out of bounds, things like that, really limited his opportunities with the football in his hands, and that was a big reason, I believe, why they were able to walk away with the win in that one. Now, what's interesting is that while the Steelers' defense looked pretty good in this, this past week's game, their offense looked completely out of rhythm at times against the Chiefs. Now, don't get me wrong, Kansas City's defense is actually quite good, and they're pretty damn good at rushing the passer, but the problem is, is that Ben Roethlisberger just looked out of sorts in that game. He missed quite a few throws, including a couple that could have been huge gains to Antonio Brown. One of the passes, he was actually covered all the way down the field. Antonio Brown was covered by Justin Houston, and Big Ben just couldn't quite get the ball Far enough. Now, it was still a big gain, but it should have been an easy touchdown, and he just wasn't able to get the ball all the way there. So, uh, you know, things like that definitely can turn into a difference between three points and seven points, and that's really what ended up happening. I don't know if it's something where Big Ben is battling through injuries or something, but he definitely doesn't look like he's at the top of his game right now, and they're going to need him to be at the top of his game heading into Sunday's game against the Patriots. Now, this past week, the Steelers had six scoring drives. All of them were field goals, zero touchdowns. That's just not going to be good enough to beat a team led by Tom Brady, in my opinion. They're going to have to do more. Brady himself actually looked a little bit rusty coming out of the bye week against the Texans, but... I mean, that's a little bit, it's it's a little bit acceptable if you really look at it because Houston's defense has actually been one of the best in the NFL this season, quietly. They've been a really, really, really good defense, which is crazy because they're without their best player in J.J. Watt, and they were playing on a team where the offense couldn't even move the ball in some games. So, again, it's somewhat understandable that the Patriots would have a problem moving the football against them in this one. But they were still able to drop 34 points. Now, granted, some of them came off of special teams. Deion Lewis came out with one of the most amazing performances that we've seen in a long time in a playoff game. Big time coming out party for him. He became the first player in postseason NFL history to score a rushing, receiving, and return touchdown in the same game. Now, what's interesting is that while Deion Lewis and... Uh, Tyreek Hill aren't exactly mirror images of one another. They're actually quite similar in a lot of ways. Obviously, both of them are very explosive. So what's going to be interesting to see here is if the Steelers are able to game plan 
and try to take away Lewis's big play ability, especially as a returner like they did to Hill. I think that's going to come down to if those linebackers are able to match up against Deion Lewis coming out of the backfield particularly. We've got to have Ryan Shazier have another big game. Lawrence Timmons is going to have to make plays, especially in pass coverage. Those athletic linebackers that they have, though, they have the ability to keep up with Lewis in the passing game, but getting them help could be important. I mean, it's going to be difficult for them to do it all game. You know, on a play-to-play -play basis, they might be able to do it, but if Deion Lewis is going out there as a receiver out of the backfield, you know, many, many times throughout the game, they're going to struggle in pass coverage throughout the entirety of the game. And there's going to be times where Lewis is going to get lo loose. So I think what's going to be important here is if the Steelers are going to need to get them extra help. And if they can, if they can cover them with the linebackers, that's going to be a big win for them. Now, what's also interesting in this game is that they have to really hope that they can keep Malcolm Butler on Antonio Brown and at least keep him in check. Now, you're not obviously going to leave Malcolm Butler on an island throughout the game against Antonio Brown. Butler's been very good this year, but Antonio Brown is arguably the best receiver in the league, and you just can't do that. You can't take away a player like Antonio Brown, but if Butler is going to be able to at least contain him, there's a possibility that he's going to need some of the help from the safeties as well. And in order for them to do that, that means that the Patriots' safeties are also going to have to, you know, potentially give up a little bit of attention that they would have otherwise kept on Le'Veon Bell in the running game. So it's interesting in this one because Le'Veon Bell is coming off of setting a Steelers single game rushing record in the playoffs against the Chiefs. He had 170 rushing yards in that contest. I mean, obviously, he's been a monster throughout the whole season. And what he's doing on the offensive side of the ball as both a run, runner and a receiver is opening things up for other guys. We're not just talking about Antonio Brown, who's obviously, you know, a stud receiver and who, who can really do it on it by, on his own. He doesn't need Le'Veon Bell on the field necessarily. But what Le'Veon Bell does is he opens things up for guys like tight end Jesse James, who caught five passes for 83 yards in Sunday's game. That's the kind of thing that Le'Veon Bell can really do. Jesse James is not some superstar talent by himself. But when the defense has to focus on the running back and have to worry about him coming out of the backfield and catching passes, they have to worry about him even pass protecting at times because they know that they're not going to be able to get to the quarterback as easily. That can be very, very difficult on a defense, and that is why Le'Veon Bell is so very, very important. Of course, in addition to the fact that himself, he's just a huge playmaker in the running game as well. So all of these things are very interesting to watch in this game. And honestly, if you compare these defenses, or these offenses, excuse me, directly to one another, I don't think there's any question that the Steelers have the advantage just in terms of personnel. You look at it, obviously, you've got the quarterback. I think the quarterback right now goes to, obviously, the Patriots. Tom Brady is just um, unbelievable this season. But Ben Roethlisberger is certainly capable of putting up a big game himself. So it's not like there's just this monumental gap at quarterback, at running back. Yes, the Patriots have playmakers. LeGarrette Blunt has been very good this year. But you can't say that those guys are on the same level as Le'Veon Bell. So it, it's a big advantage there, in my opinion, at the running back position. And then at wide receiver, you've got Antonio Brown, man. Like, obviously, Julian Edelman's been good this year. We've seen plays out of Hogan. We've seen plays out of other receivers in this passing game. But nobody holds a, a candle to Antonio Brown. And the bottom line right now is that I believe, overall, the Steelers' offense is more skilled, more talented. However... The big matchup here is not necessarily who you're comparing as far as offense to offense. The big difference here is actually on the defensive side of the ball. And I think the Patriots defense has quietly been excellent this season. They allowed the fewest points of any playoff team this season. And I think that that's going to be the differentiator in this game. Now, while the Steelers defense has played well in the playoffs, it's also worth noting that they've been up against Matt Moore and Alex Smith. Not exactly on the same caliber as Tom Brady. So again, I think the di difference in this game is going to come down to defense. Both of these offenses are capable of putting up points, and I think both of them will put up points. I think the Steelers are going to be able to contribute touchdowns a little bit more than they did this past week. So we're going to see something more in the 20s or even the low 30s for them. Unfortunately, I just don't think Pittsburgh is going to have the answers for Tom Brady and this dynamic offense for the New England Patriots. Their defense, again, Pittsburgh's, has looked good, 
but I don't think they're quite at that level at this point. I think Tom Brady is going to be able to find those holes in the defense and make plays when he needs to. I think that this linebacker group for the Steelers is going to have trouble in covering not only Deion Lewis out of the backfield, but James White if he comes out of the backfield. And I also think that they're going to potentially have some issues on the outside trying to cover these wide receivers, particularly Julian Edelman out of the slot. I'm just not sure exactly where they're going to be able to st- or how they're going to be able to stop him. So I do think it's going to be a nice game out of Julian Edelman. And then obviously, too, you have to keep in mind, LeGarrette Blunt is fresh right now. He's had a couple of weeks to, to sit. And in addition to that, he only got eight carries this past week. I think you're going to see a lot more running the football out of LeGarrette Blunt this week. I think that they're going to attack the middle of the Pittsburgh defense. And I think that they're going to try and attack them with play action as well. And that's where I believe there's going to be the difference here. I think that Pittsburgh will have some answers for Brady, but unfortunately, I think New England is going to do just enough to walk away with the win in this contest. So that means New England is going to be representing the AFC in the Super Bowl. Now let's take a look at the NFC, where I think a lot of people are, they just do not know what's going to happen in this one. And first of all, I think it bears noting that I did pick both of the NFC divisional round playoff games incorrectly. I picked the Cowboys to beat Green Bay. And I also picked Seattle to beat Atlanta. So there are, you know, unfortunately, there are points to be had here that I don't have as great of a grasp on this side of the bracket as I thought that I did coming into it. However, after seeing each of these teams play, I do think that I have a better grasp of things now in the NFC. So let's talk about it a little bit more. I'm not going to make, first of all, I'm not going to make any apologies, by the way, for picking the Cowboys over Green Bay. I mean, obviously, that was a very, very close game. It came down to the final seconds. I do have to admit, though, that I did not give Atlanta the credit that they deserved in that game against Seattle. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Now, simply put, Matt Ryan and the Atlanta offense is the most well-oiled, balanced machine that we have in the NFL this season. They can run the ball. They can pass the ball. They can score from anywhere on the field at any time. They really have it all. I mean, this is a really, really good offense. They made the Seattle defense look average. And that's a unit that's been carrying that franchise for years now. Don't let the Russell Wilson hype train get to you. Don't get me wrong. Russell Wilson has been good. But that defense is the core of that team. That is the reason why they have been good, and Atlanta humiliated them this past week. On the other side, Green Bay just has some sort of magic right now. Aaron Rodgers is playing out of his mind right now, and the Packers are truly doing what he said he was. they were going to do earlier this year. They are running the table. The difference, in my opinion is that while both of these teams are capable of passing the football, the Falcons can also run the ball. Now, granted, Green Bay is capable of breaking off a few nice runs, but for the most part, they're pretty much a one-dimensional offense right now. Don't get me wrong, it's a great one dimension, but still. Defensively, I think that Atlanta has their deficiencies, but they have one thing that they can do, and that's get after the quarterback. Vic Beasley led the NFL in sacks this season. He's going to be in charge of containing Aaron Rodgers, keeping him in the pocket, getting around that edge, and forcing him up into the pocket as well, as opposed to allowing him to get around the edges and get passes down the field like he did against the Cowboys. I think that Vic Beasley is going to be able to do a good job against Aaron Rodgers and keeping him in the pocket, which is going to present an interesting situation for the Packers, who really are used to having Rodgers roll out of the pocket and make big passes down the field. That's what he did on that final play when he hit um, when he hit Jared Cook down the field. That was basically all Aaron Rodgers just finding guys down the field, making time, extra time in the pocket, or uh, getting out of the pocket. And uh, I just don't think that they're going to be able to do that quite as often against this Atlanta defense. The Cowboys just do not have the elite pass rushers that Atlanta contains with. So that's where the big difference is, in my opinion. The other thing, the Green Bay secondary is banged up right now, and they look terrible at time at times against the Cowboys. Imagine how they're going to look against a team that have as, has as many offensive weapons in their passing game, particularly, as the Falcons do. And if you consider the fact that both Devonta Freeman and Tevin Coleman are big-time weapons in the passing game, that just makes things that much more difficult for this defense. In order for Green Bay to win this game, they're going to have to take away Julio Jones. That's a lot easier said than done. It's possible, but it's going to leave them vulnerable against the Atlanta running game. And I just don't think that they're going to be able to do that unless they stack the box. I don't think that they're going to be able to stop 
this running game unless they have a bunch of guys in there trying to stop it. And if they do that, obviously Atlanta is going to be able to go over the top to the likes of Taylor Gabriel, Julio Jones, even Mohamed Sanu. All of those guys can make plays down the field. They're all very, very dangerous. And this Green Bay secondary, it's banged up right now. It's not all that talented to begin with, honestly. So this is a major problem. This is where this game is going to be determined. Can the Green Bay secondary, the guys who have been playing way better than what they should on paper, don't get me wrong, but they're still not a great secondary. Can they contain this Atlanta passing game? I don't think they can. I, I'm going to take Atlanta in this game to end the Packers' amazing run. And it's no disrespect to what Green Bay has done. The Packers have been amazing this season. I just personally believe that Atlanta is the much more balanced team right now, both on the offensive and the defensive side of the ball. And I think that's going to be the difference. So, those are my predictions, guys. I, am again, am going to take Atlanta and New England in the Super Bowl, but I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about this? Do you guys agree with me? Do you completely disagree? And either way, let me know who are the two teams that you have representing their conferences here in the Super Bowl and which one of them is going to win. Give me your predictions in the comments section below, guys. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this prediction video and the analysis. I know a lot of you guys were saying in the last one that you really did, so I truly, truly do appreciate that. Thank you all so much for the support. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like on the video. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I will talk to you guys again soon.